Welcome to our carol service for St. Mary's Garforth, albeit a little bit different this year to the way that we normally do it. For the safety of us all, this service is online only, but it is nevertheless an opportunity for us to come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to celebrate the great festival of Christmas. In this service, we will hear and receive the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ. But more than that, we will take time to reflect on the meaning of this story. A story over 2,000 years old, and yet still as relevant today as it ever was. And we will offer to our God our thanksgiving in the joyful singing of carols. And as you are all at home, you can belt it out no matter how good or bad a voice you might think you have. You might like to dim the lights at home or light some candles. Now, let us sing our first carol, one whose words invite us to come and worship, to come and adore our Lord Jesus Christ.
The joy of discovery, that moment when hope and expectation were gloriously met by the illumination of one bright star. We cannot imagine what words were spoken by visitors or if first impression has left them somewhat confused. Messiah, Saviour, a King, born in the barest of palaces, yet they saw and fell down on their knees in adoration. Lord, they saw you and knew whom they had met. As we meet around crib, candle and advent wreath, draw us into that stable in our imagination. Draw us close to our Saviour, Messiah and King. As we bring not gold, myrrh or frankincense, but the gift of our lives, the only offering we can bring. The prophecy of the Messiah's birth. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
The angel Gabriel brings news to the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will, will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Sometimes they say that it is darkest before the dawn. Well, this certainly has been a long night. I can't sleep now. There's too much to think on. And yet I cannot think because it's just too much. So I'm sitting here looking east, waiting for the sun, looking for the bright morning star, getting ready to rise again and face the world. Things weren't exactly easy yesterday, but I thought I'd have things worked out then. I love Mary. I love her still, but it just seems best for everyone to let her go quietly. Of course, there were alternatives. It can get very nasty when this sort of thing comes out. And I was angry. I thought about making a spectacle of her until I realized it would not look good on me either. Besides, deep down, somehow, I knew I wasn't perfect. Did I really want to start throwing stones? And so I did what I thought best, a quiet settlement. She goes her way, I go mine, and we carry on somehow. But then a dream, a dream unlike any I had experienced before. Not confusing and bizarre, but crystal clear and full of authority. I am tempted to say it was irresistible, though of course I could have denied it all. Maybe it is just that we've been waiting for something for so long, hoping against hope, waiting for a word, waiting for someone, someday. Maybe it was the name, Jesus, like a reminder of something too important to forget and that promise. He will save people from their sins. Too much to take in. Too much to ignore. Too much. And yet, I find myself hopeful for the first time in a long time. I don't understand. What do I know of saving people from sins? I am a simple carpenter. All I know is wood and nails. What can I say? I hope. I believe, for now, I must just get on.
The birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. An Advent Creed. We believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, the one who is full of patience, who is not afraid of silence, who does not need to fill each moment with activity and noise, the one who is beyond bluster and flurry, and who does not jostle for attention. We believe in God the Son, saviour of creation, who slipped into Bethlehem one night, mostly unnoticed, who lived 30 years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his patient father, who waited for the right time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died then rose again on a quiet Sunday morning. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews and refreshes, sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God who patiently waits for us and who longs for us to do the same.
news of Jesus' birth reaches the shepherds. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told. Little Bo Peep has lost his sheep. Doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone, they'll come home, wagging their tails behind them. <laughs> as if. In my experience, there's no such thing as a homing sheep. When they go astray, they stay astray. Unless we go and find them. And that's what we do up here. Forgotten by most people. It's cold and dark and cut off. But tonight, I don't want to moan because something's changed. Not so much in my circumstances. We're still here in the night with the sheep, out of sight, out of mind. And yet, I don't feel alone anymore. I've been noticed. For last night, the darkness ripped open and the sky, this sky, was full of light. I think God wanted to attract our attention. <laughs> well, we were certainly grabbed. In fact, we were terrified. It was awesome, bright, and different, and strange. It was glorious. I guess God is like that. It unsettled us good and proper. Don't be afraid. That's what they said. God is always saying that. Don't be afraid. I guess it bears repeating because most of us feel scared a lot of the time. That's why I never get frustrated with the sheep. Because in some ways I think I'm a lot like them. I need a helping hand. Someone to watch over me. Don't be afraid but come and see what is happening. And so we went. Who wouldn't? And what we found was very ordinary and yet very wonderful. A baby, just as we've been told, a baby with grateful parents, tired, smiling. To us, the joy was that we had something to say, something to add, something which lent the ordinary moment an extraordinary potential. This baby's not just any baby, we said. Let's tell you what we've been told. And that's what we did. Now we're back here where we belonged before, watching. Most people don't think of us. Most people take us for granted or ignore us. But God has seen us. He has let us in on his greatest surprise. We are loved, it seems. And that makes all the difference.
the visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Good, he's asleep. There's a lot to wonder about when you become a mother. New life with all its potential, an array of possibilities. A new life and a new love which overwhelms you and fills you with joy and concern, a lot of concern. The world becomes full of what ifs. What if he doesn't sleep? What if he doesn't eat? What if he's ill? What if I can't cope? That's all wonderful, but also routine. I've seen mothers with children ever since I've had eyes to see, and all these things are remarkable and commonplace. I feel all these things too, but there's more. I think it would be true to say that my boy comes with more what-ifs than most. What if he grows to become all that's been promised? What if he's not able to bear the responsibility, the expectation, the joy and the pain? What if people don't understand? What if everyone demands of him? And what if they do not get what they want? What if? What if it all goes horribly wrong? And what if I'm there to watch? And what if I can do nothing to help? And what if he is the one he, we've been expecting? What if he is the one who will save us from our sins? What if all our hopes and all our fears come down to this, to him? It's good to see him sleeping so peaceful. Perhaps that's enough for today. I look at him and I cannot help but wonder, what if?
The Christmas story. How would you explain it? How would you picture Christmas if you could frame it? The nativity, right? Shepherds watching their flocks by night. Wise men trekking whilst tracking a sat-nav starlight with Mary and Joseph, humbled by the sight of little baby Jesus tucked in tight. That's Christmas, right? Propped up with straw and reeds and a tray of animal feed and cushioned in. Hey, I know it sounds quite cosy and nice, Reality was, there was no room for the little guy on that Bethlehem night. He kept in a cradle. Animals as roommates. I'm not trying to pick holes in the state of the place. I'm just saying the way they were staying was just short of space. We I mean, talk about entrance. His birth from a dress meant Jesus literally arrived in the mess. Well, less about the birthplace and the state of the floor. I mean, there's more to the Christmas story than the deck of straw. Flip forward eight days. In the temple, this little guy's the reason for praise. From the lips of a guy called Sim who's in his old age. For years, Sim waited in anticipation, but then the old met the new. My eyes have seen your salvation. The newborn Jesus, from messy manger to a passing of the baton just eight days later. Seeing the mess, of the birth comes a new age, and what's more, the birth was foretold in a mess age. Which brings us back to the cast. At the nativity set, you see, it was a message that guided their stable footsteps. An angel postman popped round, said Mary'd found favour, a save the date declaration, you'll give birth to the saviour. He'd be son of the most high, born through the spirit, heir to David's throne, his reign without limit to Joseph. Call him Jesus, he really will bless, cause he came to save people from all their mess. To the shepherds, he's here to rescue. That's why he's come. The reason for good news of joy, he's the one. As for the wise men, they figured the news. They gave gifts and paid homage to little king of the Jews. See, God brought the message, so they entered the mess to see Jesus' arrival at the nativity set. But let's back up a sec. See, this rhetoric rings a bell. Back in the day, Isaiah waxed lyrical about a future, Emmanuel, God with us, one who'd be central to the story of forgiveness. So zoom out from the Christmas postcard, a message 700 years prior. He'll be a light to the searchers that spread salvation, says Isaiah. See, the angel's news, it wasn't new. In fact, these nativity messages echoed God's promises right through the ages. These messages read Jesus, speaking hope to the earth, predicting his arrival centuries before the birth. Thing is, when Christmas comes round, maybe there's a danger that we go Pinterest with Christmas and just pin up the manger in the nativity scene. It's like rating a whole film by watching one scene or thinking you know a novel because you had a quick look. So you get the whole story by skim reading one page in a book. And what I said before about him born in the mess and the deco of straw, maybe it could also be a metaphor for all the mistakes, all the messiness in life and what that creates, all the stuff in this world that just doesn't sit right. There was a reason he was born on that first Christmas night. He was born in the mess to make the wrong right. This is the message of hope. Because out of the mess, saw God news birth that will certainly bless. Frame the stable, sure, but don't miss the picture. It was a message declared since the beginning of scripture. A war in the mess, but there's only one victor. A heel bruised, but be good news for sure. The very promise became flesh in that deco of straw. See, from the mess comes a message and there's none that is higher. Because what follows the mess is I-A-H, mess, I am. God, you hear the calls, the cries, the voices raised, the silent whispered prayers. Israel in her exile, crying out for a Messiah. Elizabeth in her barrenness, calling out for a son. Shepherds in their poverty, praying for a saviour. Mary in her innocence, searching for a safe place to give birth. And still today, the voices cry out. The homeless in their vulnerability, 
asking for a welcome. The rich in their emptiness, longing for acceptance. The lonely in their busyness, crying for community. The families in their arguments, praying for peace. God, you hear the calls, the cries, the voices raised, the silent whispered prayers. Hear our prayers today and help us, where we can, to be the answer to someone else's prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. The timelessness of Jesus, God incarnate. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. But he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own. And his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. As our service draws to a close, I just have a few notices to share with you. I want to say a big thank you to all who have made today possible, the readers, the techies behind the scene, and those who have made the song resources available for churches to use at this time. We hope very much to see you again over Christmas, and so I want to tell you a few things that are happening this week. You could join us on Christmas Eve morning between 10 a.m. and 12 noon, just drop in, come and see our crib, light a candle, say a prayer, have a few moments of quiet and peace from the hustle and bustle of that day. Or later on, on Christmas Eve at 3 p.m., you could join us for our online nativity, which will be available on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website at 3 p.m. We also have Midnight Communion on Christmas Eve at 11.15 p.m. and Celebration Communion on Christmas Day at 9.30 a.m. If you wish to join us in church for either of those services, you will need to book in advance. You can see our website for details. Or you can watch them streamed live at the same time on Facebook, and then they will be available a little later in the day on YouTube and 
on our website. Normally, for our Christmas services, we take donations for local charities. And this year, because we're not in church, we don't want those charities to suffer uh, any more than they will have done already this year. So you will find at the end of this service a slide that explains to you how you could make a donation to our Christmas fund, which will go to support the work of the Children's Society and also Young Minds. And finally, remember that church is not a building. It is a group of people who share a desire to know and follow Jesus as best as they can. So even if our building is closed or restricted in its use, church is not closed. We are still here worshipping, praying and serving our community. So do get in church if you feel that we can help you at all. Our closing prayer and blessing. When the world became flesh, earth was joined to heaven in the womb of Mary. May the love and obedience of Mary be your example. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and homes. May you be filled with the joy of the Spirit and the gifts of your eternal home. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our service will end in the traditional way, with the resounding carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Mm -hmm.